Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zachly, and first and foremost, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of the support that you guys showed me yesterday. It was my first video back in like a week to two weeks, and you guys absolutely crushed it with the support. I, I can't say thank you enough, and I know for a fact that I have the best subscribers on all of YouTube, period. And that's not even up for discussion. Anyways, you guys already know that you are the real MVPs, but that being said, let's just get right into this video. For the past few years, the Denver Nuggets have been the most unfortunate team in the NBA when it comes to missing out on the NBA playoffs. They always miss out on the playoffs by this much. Last year, it came down to the final game of the season when the Denver Nuggets lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves to decide whether or not they would get into the playoffs. I still think that's unfortunate because as a team goes, I would have rather seen the Denver Nuggets in the playoffs last year as opposed to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And that had to be tough for the Denver Nuggets players, coaches, fans, and the entire organization, knowing that for two straight years, you were literally a game away of making the NBA playoffs. All of that was in the past though. This year, the very first game of the season, the Denver Nuggets let it be known that they're going to make the playoffs this year and not just make the playoffs they are going to be one of the best teams in the western conference and that's exactly what they have been doing right now the denver nuggets are the second seed in the western conference with a record of 42 and 18 and this comes after they just defeated the okc thunder 121 to 112 last night behind nikola Jokic, of course having another monster game 36 points 10 rebounds and nine assists he's been having a phenomenal season and i just want to say that even though the nuggets have been been surprisingly good this year no one thought they would be this good it kind of scares me knowing that they're already this good and this is just a sign of things to come from this team they're just getting started the Denver Nuggets are still a very young team with the young court that has little to no playoff experience whatsoever and regardless of all of that they're the second seed in a competitive Western Conference. That's insane. Not only the second seed, but they still have a chance to overthrow the Golden State Warriors to become the number one seed. Would I bet on that happening? No, not really, but it's possible. And this comes the year after they barely missed out in the playoffs. And it's not like they went out and signed any massive free agents or made any big trades to add a star player. No, this is pretty much the same team. They just developed and grew and this was the result of that it's hard to believe how good they got since last season and by the way i can't wait to see michael porter jr come back to the denver nuggets next year either a lot of people forgot about this guy but let's not forget that michael porter jr was kind of like zion williamson before zion williamson not the same player but he was getting the same level of hype before he hurt his back the guy was being talked up about coming into the league and being a scorer like kd a guy who could score from anywhere on the court and if he comes back next season healthy able to play and is able to do what he was doing before the injury do you know how much better that'll make this Denver Nuggets team I don't want to think about it because it terrifies me 20 games into their season and the Boston Celtics still haven't made much progress in terms of coming together as a team they just got blown out by the Toronto Raptors last night 118 95 game wasn't really close Pascal Siakam the young up-and-coming star for the Toronto Raptors leading the way with 25 points and eight rebounds as for the Boston Celtics though this was their fifth loss in their past seven games so instead of getting better as a team like we all thought they would as the season progressed like they should have been as the season progressed things still haven't changed much since the beginning of the season they're still dysfunctional and once again with only 20 some odd games left remaining in their season time's running out for them to get their act together and after the Celtics got blown out by the Raptors in this game you already know that the post game interviews were going to be kind of interesting and they were the man Marcus Smart just admitted that this Boston Celtics team isn't playing together at all and that the difference between the past couple of years and this year is that in the past couple of years when adversity hit like it's hit this year the Boston Celtics were together and they were able to rally together through that however this season Boston Celtics haven't been together so when adversity hit like it has they just crumble uh, past seasons when you guys been hit by a big run like that, you've been able to come back easily. It doesn't seem like when you're hit with a little adversity like that this year that that's happening. What, what do you think is happening that way? 
we're just not together. Last last couple of years we were together. When when those things hit, we become stronger. We're not we're not there yet, you know. And uh, like I said, we're going to get there. It's just taking time. And then Kyrie Irving in his post game interview, well. He didn't even say much. He didn't look to be in the greatest mood, which is understandable. They just got blown out, but had lost five of the last seven games. What basketball player would be okay with that? But it was clear as day that Kyrie Irving would rather be anywhere than sitting there and answering all of these questions from the reporters. Talk about the lessons you want to take away from this game. Is there anything specific you really want to focus on for tomorrow? Uh, just uh, remaining tough. Brad talked about just defensively, guys been taking shortcuts. Um, so do you see that, and how do you guys fix things like that? I don't know. It's up to Brett. I just said that you guys aren't playing together. Is that a fair diagnosis? I mean, as Marcus is a pain, so is it your respect it. 95-64, guys. There's something going on with the Boston Celtics. We as fans can jump to conclusions, can try and guess as to what we think is the real problem with the Boston Celtics, but we'll never know. That's something that the Celtics are going to keep behind closed doors. However, I'm sticking by my theory that I've had all season long. I've saying it since pretty much the beginning of the season that I believe the Boston Celtics problem is they got too much freaking talent. And on top of that, the talent got egos. All of the talent isn't meshing together. The egos are colliding. Everyone has their own personal agenda. And this is is the result of that. You got a lot of different players on this team trying to accomplish different things, whether it be to establish themselves as a star in this league, or whether it be to earn more money in their upcoming free agency, whether it be to earn a bigger role on a different team, whether it be to prove that they can lead a team to a championship without LeBron James, or whether it be to just try and get healthy and get back to their original selves. All of these players have different goals aside from just winning an NBA championship. And the problem with that is sometimes those goals can outweigh the goal of winning an NBA championship. And then the team that was so fluent, that had such good chemistry, all of a sudden isn't as fluid and doesn't have the same chemistry. That being said, this Boston Celtics team is also a team who has always found a way to thrive in the face of adversity for the past two years. I'm not saying that it's destined to happen again this year, but just looking at the past couple of years, it seems like it's every time when the Boston Celtics are being counted out that they play their best basketball. They always find a way to pull it out to surprise people. So heading into the playoffs, the Boston Celtics are still being counted out in a series against the Toronto Raptors, the Milwaukee Bucks, or the Philadelphia 76ers. That's when I think the Boston Celtics might wake up and might get their act together. That's when, even though they'll still have their own alternate goals, their own hidden agendas, they'll unite around the single cause of making it to the NBA Finals. First, it was Chris Middleton. Then it was Spencer Dinwiddie. And, and I guess now it's going to be Henry Ellenson. You'll just add him to the list of players that the Pistons drafted and never gave a chance, but then they work out with the next team that they go to. Chris Middleton became an all-star on the Bucks. Spencer Dinwiddie's becoming a great player on the Brooklyn Nets. And Henry Ellenson, in his first game with the New York Knicks after the Pistons just released him into free agency to make room for Wayne Ellington, had the best game of his career off the Knicks bench, scoring 13 points to go along with a nine rebounds and five assists and because of Allenson the Knicks were able to get the 108 to 103 win over the Orlando Magic and not just because of Allenson but because of the rookie Mitchell Robinson as well yo Mitchell Robinson last night was balling out 17 points 14 rebounds six blocks he was the first player to post up a stat line like that since David Robinson did it Back in 1989, an all-time Mitchell Robinson just become the third rookie ever to post up a stat line like that. And as for New York as a whole, they're very interesting. This team has some young talent. They definitely have young talent. Dennis Smith Jr., Kevin Knox, Alonzo Trier, Damian Dotson, and now maybe Henry Allenson is too early to say for sure though. So New York definitely has the young talent. Now it's just a question of what on earth are they going to do it? Are they actually going to just let it develop? Or are they going to try and cash it in for a team that's more ready to compete right now? Or at least a team that they think is more ready to compete right now? Because remember the last time the New York Knicks tried to build a contender on the fly, they wound up handing Joaquin Noah over $70 million. Anyways, that's actually gonna cover everything that we had to talk about today. 
thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back once again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Today is Wednesday, so I will be right back here tomorrow, Thursday, covering everything else that happened in the NBA. Thank you once again for watching, though. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs, but with all of that being said, I'll see you tomorrow. But until then, I'm out of here. Peace!